Hormones are kind of a, a tricky subject for me uh, in that I keep going back and forth about kind of what what to use, what to use. Pronouns are a tricky subject for me. Unreal. Then maybe you shouldn't be working at a job. Mike, your day. Get the fuck out of my chair. Yeah, be careful, Joe. She's coming for you. This, uh, you know, we've covered Joe Rogan since the start of his show here. And, um, you know, to us, watching him be devoured by the mainstream is quite the thrill. So this is where we're headed with this. Um, it gets worse here. Joe Rogan said he was a free agent. It was just a licensing deal. You must meet the Spotify employee. And I hope we have that video, two of them. Yeah, this is coming thing. up. Should we show them first, the sure. employees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to meet Joe's new creative director team? Joe works for a series of theys that make Caitlyn Jenner look like a very nice American baseball player. Wait till you see Joe Rogan's new bosses they've actually put together a cute little video uh that i'm going to pull up called well i don't know it's uh, something just about them <laughs> this is joe rogan's bosses uh we're going to start with bard he's a software engineer as spot of everyone Wait. just trusts each other hold on hold on i'm gonna make this nice let's make this nice this is spotify's newest video showing uh, who they are as a company. I think this is important to know. Joe Rogan is their biggest investment yet, $100 million. They've never paid anyone $100 million. You got to hear my theory about this. Remind me to tell the theory about why they did this and what's going on. Remember? Just tell it now. Should I? Sure. Here's what I think is going on. I think Spotify is using Joe. This is all a scam. I think this is not even a theory, and it's 100% true. Yes. So listen to this. I think Spotify said, all right, guys, let's have our yearly marketing meeting. We have a uh, $100 million budget this year. Let's go around and take some ideas. What should we do with the money? And they went around, and uh, at the end of the room, you know, ashtrays filled with cigarettes, I'm sure. Um, they came up with this idea and that was, what if we give Joe Rogan a hundred million dollars to come to Spotify? Now, if Spotify paid Joe Rogan, let's say a hundred thousand dollars a year to come to Spotify, this wouldn't be in the news. If you paid him $500,000. It wouldn't really be in the news. Giving him a hundred million dollars is a marketing move in itself. It makes everyone go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Spotify, first of all, has that much money. They must be good. And Joe Rogan is getting paid that much money. He must be great. Well, I want to come. They're trying to make a name for themselves in the yes. podcasting space. So anything that relates Spotify to a podcast exactly. is good so, for what they want in the future. So hold on. They don't care about, this is what I think. At all. They don't care about Joe Rogan or his success one bit. The whole $100 million was spent on getting into the media. Spotify, Spotify, Spotify pays $100 million. That makes them sound epic. And believe it or not, that gives them clout to you. So at home, you're going, damn. They're fucking bosses. They have $100 million and Joe gets $100 but million. not only that, it makes you associate Spotify with yeah. podcasting, which you well, never did course. before. Well, of course. So there's that too. There's a many factors. Remember, they're spending $100 million. They got to bundle up a lot of stuff. Now, the censored episodes. I think it's another Spotify marketing plan. That Joe's not in on. Joe might not be in on it. I think Spotify goes, you know what? We could... Because they don't care about Joe Rogan's existence. They care about Spotify's existence. And them censoring those episodes is on par with their wokeness that you're about to see in this video. So maybe they didn't tell Joe, censored the episodes, knowing it would make big news. A company that has $100 million to pay an employee 
also has a marketing team similar to Red Skulls. Don't you remember him from Germany? Uh, yes, Captain America back in the 40s, he had to deal with Red Skull, a Hitler-like figure, and they would come up with some real sick stuff. You know, when you think a company, everybody thinks of everything first and foremost as if like what they would do. They don't really realize it's like, dude, if what they did uh, in Nazi Germany happened, then anything could happen. And when people are dealing with these big numbers, they do stuff. I mean, really, it's, it, 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 you, you can't put these. These aren't conspiracy theories. These are like light business ideas that I companies do. I don't think do. this is a conspiracy theory at all. I think so this is what happened. Let's say Spotify censors the episodes knowing this would make giant news. But the news at the end of the day for Spotify is Spotify doesn't allow racists and you know, terrible people on their platform, which is good for them, right? That falls in line with what they want people to think about them. And then uh, you hear Spotify podcast, Spotify podcast, and it's in the news. And they, they're probably, it would cost more than $100 million to get in all these outlets, all the advertising they've gotten out of the two stories, paying Joe $100 million in the censorship story, it has reached more ears than $100 million I mean, would buy. They certainly do not care what Joe's fans think of him or any mini Joe Rogan related yeah. community controversy. No, why would they care? At all. Like, this isn't about getting new subscribers to Spotify, yeah. really. No. It's just about the well, stuff you said. Well, it could be. Let's just like, say a legend. Only a minuscule well, part oh, of it. Let me show you this. This is Spotify's staff. Does this look like somebody that wants Gavin McInnes? On their platform, watch. At Spotify, everyone just trusts each other and has this culture of it's okay to ask questions even if they might be difficult questions. Pronouns are kind of a, a tricky subject for me uh, in that I keep going back and forth about kind of what, what to use, what to use. Pronouns are a tricky subject for me. <laughs> Unreal. Then maybe you shouldn't be working at a job, you gotta take a, uh, you gotta handle this pronoun thing, Grimace. Pronouns are a tricky thing for me. That's why I'm an upper, in an well, upper I'm, management position. Not to be a Joe Rogan oh. type guy, but in the last scene, it said that her pronouns were she slash they. Yeah. So she hasn't picked yet. No, she's <laughs> having a lot of trouble with pronouns. Look at this woman. She's having difficulty with her. Uh, noose that she wears. I don't even know what this is. That's like that Bubba guy's noose that was hanging in his uh, NASCAR thing. I work at Spotify, <laughs> but what I mostly need is spot treatment for these zits. I thought Spotify was a new acne medication. Boy, was I wrong. Now I'm the CEO of rap <laughs> on Spotify for their rap playlist. I don't like the genre myself. All right, let's see some more. This is Joe Rogan's bosses. Questions. Pronouns are kind of a, a tricky <laughs> subject oh, they are. for me uh, in that I keep going back and forth about kind of... You keep going back and forth to the coffee bar. Oh, well, that, there you go. She's saying yeah. it, so... Pronouns are tricky, so I keep going back and forth to Andre, <laughs> who makes a great cup of organic fair trade brew. It's completely free to me because if I have to pay for it, I would spaz out and kill everyone. And um, I'm having a difficult time uh, deciding if I'm a woman or a pendulette. So, yeah. Also, Gavin McInnes will never be on our network. I keep going back and forth about kind of what, what to use, what to use where. Well, I spent wow! about 30 years. Another one. I spent about 30 years where... This guy rocks. I absolutely love his fit and how he this, matched his hair Do you hair know where this guy's from? Do you shirt. know where he's from? Where? Ari Shafir's Salvia Trip. The underwater yes. one? Yes. <laughs> so I've spent 30 years uh, living under a lake, and then when Ari Shafir did Salvia Divinorum, <laughs> I actually uh, was brought to life via his trip, believe it or not. I know that sounds far fetched, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm the product of a uh, drug experience. 
Have you ever heard anything like that? It's just a prediction. <laughs> Let's hear what he has to say. His name is Bard, B-A-R-D. Uh, name is sick. Come on. Well, it was Bart, but I changed it to Bard because it's never been heard before. <laughs> That's I'm, cool. Yes, oh, of course it's cool. My whole thing is cool. Cool colors, blues, of course. I wear a lot of blues. Mirrors are so in the closet because this is my crazy. previous employers didn't have any particular tolerance for, for transgender people. Wow. At Spotify, we have employee resource groups and Spectrum is our LGBTQ plus employee. Do you do anything revol involving music? No, or well, keep this media? employee research groups in mind. Yeah. Because. Yes, keep it in mind. Music is the last thing on our minds at Spotify, the music engine. It's more about this, snack bars and stale brownies in the morning. Resource groups and Spectrum is our LGBTQ plus employee resource group. At Spotify, having a diverse workforce and being an inclusive. Oh, an Asian bitch. You need one of those. How come her pronouns didn't get named what are your and she pronouns? doesn't get a name? Well, What's I mean, they said everybody else's name and nouns. She gets nothing. Yeah. It's pretty rude. Well, How am I supposed Asian. to know? At Spotify, having a diverse workforce and being inclusive is the most important thing. It is important so everyone can feel like themselves at work. So what we did is to come up with a list of essentially every medical procedure that trans people might need. Why? Basically, Spotify Why does this say, oh, we didn't realize there was a problem there. We'll fix it. Okay. They're Some obviously the conning you. Some guy in the chat just goes, this is gay. I mean, it's disgusting. I mean, for any company to do that, I don't know what they're doing. And by the way, Spotify does not care about you. You're obviously being used because they think that there's a market for this stuff. Okay? You should be very mad at Spotify. At least I would never do that to you. Okay? You're going to end up knowing that you've been used and had, and that's going to affect your mental health more than a few jokes. Um, Let's keep so go going. Go back to the article. The Spotify employees. Do you want to hear what's going on with Joe Rogan? Look at this. Spotify CEO defends keeping transphobic Joe Rogan podcasts online. Interesting. Listen to this. Multiple sources inside Spotify described an all-hands meeting. This is on Vice, Gavin McInnes's old company. How funny is this? <laughs> Gavin McInnes is the creator of Vice. He was pushed out of Vice for his trans phobic remarks this is true shane smith took over they took the company from him joe rogan has had gavin mckinnis on the show gavin mckinnis are the episodes that spotify is holding and here's vice doing an article about it which is really weird because joe rogan used to be very good friends with shane smith the new owner of vice gavin's old partner he was on the show all the time he stopped coming on and they had a really good rapport. Those were some big episodes. I wonder what's happened. Multiple sources inside Spotify described an all-hands meeting in which Spotify CEO Daniel Eck, you add an L in there. Everyone was saying you had an L in there. And now you know why the Spotify CEO Elk might be involved. <laughs> he discussed the company's handling of the controversial podcast or controversial what? In a Spotify all-hands company meeting on Wednesday, the CEO, Daniel Out defended keeping transphobic content from the hugely popular podcaster, Joe Rogan, on the audio platform, who earlier in this year signed the exclusive licensing deal. Some staff inside the company feel alienated by Spotify's hosting of the certain Joe Rogan episodes. Okay. Pull up Alex Jones video again. This is the Alex Jones, Joe Rogan video. Give me it. Joe Rogan has just been caught in a giant lie. And Alex Jones, you must be a little wiser than me. You know, I turned into Alex Jones the other day. You'll find it. Alex Jones. Post Joe. it in the chat if you have it. Yeah, post it in the chat. I mean, this is a big video. The one know, where he, he talks about the censored episodes. For those of you who don't know, there are how many episodes, Xander, that are missing? 40-something conservative episodes. Joe Rogan told Alex Jones that they'd all be back up and that it's just a porting issue. It, Here, let's see what Alex Jones says. 
Now, I tuned in to Alex Jones the other day, and this motherfucker is just rambling about globalists still, a term <laughs> that I still don't know what it means. The globalists are cut. I, I don't even want to do an impression. It's so hack. Alex Jones, you don't have the wits about you to go, you're being played by Spotify. I'm the one who has to uncover this for the mighty Alex Jones, even when your son's listening. Hey, hey, uh, Junior, go tell your dad to wake the fuck up and listen to Red Bar. <laughs> Let me play you Alex's Jones video. This is all we got, a, a Facebook rip? It should be on you. It should be everywhere, Jules. This is a big video. Oh, here it is. Okay, um, I need to play this again. Because we're about to blow this excuse wide open. When everyone noticed, when Xander noticed, our own Xander is the one who broke this story. Without him, we don't know if anyone would know about this. The 43 missing episodes censored by Spotify, including Alex Jones himself. Everyone goes, where are they? Joe Rogan refuses till this day to say anything about it, which is sketchy as fuck. And then all of a sudden... Instead of Joe Rogan telling us what's happened, Alex Jones comes on the screen and says this. First off, I've been mobbed by people the last three months on the street, calling my phone, sending emails saying, has Joe Rogan really moved to Austin or is he moving to Austin? I will answer that question in just a moment. But first off, I had a lengthy discussion with Joe this morning, just a few minutes ago, because I had to call him in the middle of the night, buzz, buzz, call, call. <laughs> I get up at like 5 a.m., dozens of text messages and calls saying, is Spotify censoring the Joe Rogan podcast? And I didn't know until I talked to him this morning and he explained it. They've got 1,500 plus files and then some migrating over and they've had a few problems here and there with corrupted files with the naming of them. And Spotify they've had that wants to have a first rollout and then a second rollout and here's the key. Oh. Joe Rogan's favorite 100 episodes Listen. of the last 10 years or so will be left on YouTube starting December 31st when he goes exclusively. Oh, his favorite episode is where him and Gavin McInnes and Steven Crowder got into an argument. Here's the newest story. Some staff inside the company feel alienated by Spotify's hosting of certain Joe Rogan episodes. According to copies of some of the questions presented to the meeting obtained by the motherboard, uh, motherboard, their fucking website. The news signals how Spotify, as it moves into the podcasting space beyond music, is facing content moderation decisions more commonly associated with social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter. Spotify has already removed JRE episodes with some right-wing figures, including Alex Jones and Gavin McInnes. Here's a quote. In the case of Joe Rogan, a total of 10 meetings have been held with various groups and individuals to hear their respective concerns, according to these sources, and some of them want Rogan removed because of things he said in the past. Now, everybody is focusing on that lot here. Scroll up for yeah. a sec, what you just read about yeah. Spotify has already removed JRE episodes yeah. like that's alternative to what we've heard. What do you mean? That yeah, Spotify and Alex Jones say, oh no, it's a porting issue. I mean, They'll but be up, up until soon. this article came out, we thought that it was just yeah, like you yeah, said, yeah, that's a what tech they said. Issue. So now Spotify saying no, we have a problem with it. Is there any more in here uh, that I should read? You get the idea. So, Alex, shouldn't you be the one? Why are you? Shouldn't you be the the like most judgmental about this and most uh, you know concerned? about this you're the big conspiracy guy and you're the one groveling for rogan like this it's crazy uh wait i want to play i want to hear uh what else he has to say here i feel like this video is so important because it really he has if, no integrity now well well <laughs> not only that but everything alex jones says in this video if it doesn't happen joe's fucked and alex is fucked and no one's forgetting so to say all these things in this video, saying that Joe Rogan told you to say it and Joe Rogan hasn't said that he hasn't told you to say it, Joe Rogan's equally responsible. So when your episode isn't back, are you still going to say it's coming? When Gavin's episode isn't back up, what are you going to say? And what do you say to the Vice article? Why are you doing this? Let's hear more. To Spotify. For this couple months, no man's land, the content will be on both platforms and will be migrating over. And so that's why 
the Alex Jones interview is not there. That's why some of the other interviews aren't there, because those are going to be the exclusive interviews that are left on YouTube, where in Joe's words, they'll probably get even more views than if they were on why Spotify. Why are you buying so that's this? what's happening. And so are you I being paid? Joe, always been a straight shooter. Is this going to pause? Point okay. blank, I said, well, is Spotify censoring you? He said, absolutely not. What they're doing is trying to organize things right now. Oh, they're trying to organize? Why are they having staff meetings with people saying, no, I don't want those episodes up? Why, you know what I mean? They're just organizing things or are they having staff meetings with blue-haired trans people who are saying, I object. Which one is it? You should be the one delivering this transmission, not me. <laughs> That's what he calls a broadcast. I don't get this migration taken care of and that I will obviously be on the podcast as well in the very, very near future. Oh, yeah? So I will be on other guests. Where? Will you be at the cafe with uh, Alejandro? Serving they coffee? The coffee doesn't even have caffeine. It'll kill a trans person. Beyond, Joe Rogan is in control of what goes on his show, and I'm just super excited about it. And Joe to, to go on and say this, can't you just be like, this is what he told me. I'm just repeating what I heard. Don't shoot the messenger. But to go on and be like, and he's also in total in control. He will never censor anything, and I can prove it. It's like, you're being paid, aren't you? It's something's up. Something is up. Why are you so definitively, you know what I mean? Like, how do you know? He's super excited because we've been friends since I met him in 1998. We've had our ups and downs. We've had some incredible adventures together. I'll just leave it at that. And to see him as the number one media person in the world and to know uh, that he's having all these big, diverse conversations is extremely, extremely exciting. So what? Joe is not being censored. He is the captain of his own Wait, ship. Wait, but you can't say that. He told you that. You could say Joe says he's not. You can't say he is not. He's the captain of his own show. This sounds so guilty. Guys, I'm telling you something's up. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. And then I'm going to kebab at people. I'm very, very excited, and I look forward to coming on his podcast very, very soon. Now, let's move to the next point. Why is Joe very excited? Why am I very excited? Well, Austin is a really cool city. What is going on? Do you see what I mean? What if the city of Austin is paying these guys like <laughs> tourism bucks? Tourism is a big advertising market. What this if they clip said is from tourism.austin.com? Not only is Spotify going to give you 100 million, the city of Austin is going to give Alex Jones 50 million and Joe Rogan 100 million. Let's get people out to Austin. People are fleeing. This is a great time to hit them. I don't know, but why are you sh doing this tourism campaign? This is like when you, you're tuned on the TV and it's like, Michigan, it's more than just milk. Or, you know what I mean? And they're trying to like get you to move there. Like, what is this? This is tourism board stuff. Especially compared to Los Angeles. And where Joe lives is a very, very beautiful part of Texas. I'll leave it at that. Uh, but yes, uh, Joe has moved to Austin, Texas. He is here with his family. And it's actually come out in the local real estate news back on August. Okay, yeah, that's I enough. Say Why? <laughs> because now they're just talking about Texas. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think this is interesting. I think there's more to this little Alex Jones video. Like, this is the key. You're right. To finding out the secrets. That's why I want to hear it one more time. Because every time I listen, I find something else where I go, wait a minute anything because joe asked me not to but now joey diaz has talked about it now a lot of the people have talked about it it's in the newspaper but still my phone rings off the hook saying does he live in austin does he live in austin i hear it's dallas i hear it's uh, san antonio no it's austin texas and the local papers have accurately reported on some of it not all of it uh so i'm just going to leave it at that joe has his privacy he's really excited to be here as part of the mass exodus out of the blue states i just hope that those following Joe don't bring the California video. problems here. I know he's more of a libertarian, so we're extremely happy to have Joe right here, deep in the heart. This is really wild. On my Lone Star beer shirt. It's the most Texas thing I had uh, here. I in mean, my this office. is like the behavior Alex Jones has here is so sponsorshipy. You know what I mean? Where it's mm -hmm. like this is paid for. I've got to be polite and proper. So that's the facts. Joe Rogan does indeed live in a really cool place in Austin, Texas. Jesus. With his family. He's built a new podcast. By the way, I have full footage of his home. You're not going to believe the McMansion he lives in 
we're talking illegal to see if we could show this, but we did acquire his address here at Red Bar. We acquired, and we're not going to dox him. We have no plans on that. Uh, but we acquired some real estate videos touring his home. It is a McMansion. Now, it is on a beautiful property by a river. Uh, and to that, I say, you're going to be in mosquito heaven, Joe. I hope you get eaten up. By mosquitoes. This place looks like, uh, wait till you see it. Wait till I show you it. It really looks bug heavy. And I could say this, his house is more similar to Anthony Cumia's house than it is his last place. I don't know if you ever saw his last place in LA. It was beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, the land around it was gorgeous. The house was gorgeous. Everything about it was great. Uh, his new house is a Mick mansion. They might have redone the interior a bit. Uh, but uh, it is a horrendous display of stupidism, okay? And we're working on being able to show you that video very soon. No, Mike, those are old pics. It doesn't matter. The outside of the house is new. Studio. He sure. put video out on that a few days ago. That's got millions of views. And so they're mystery solved. But again... I'm not the one breaking this. I said I wouldn't report it. It's been reported, but people don't know what's true. So now because I say he lives in Austin, people probably say, no, actually he lives in Auckland uh, in uh, the Pacific Ocean or something. But no, no, he actually does live here in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And he's not being censored. And I'm very excited to know that what our super uh, popular episode 9-11 and the other episodes up on YouTube will still be there unless the internet gods of big tech decide to remove it as well. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Join us weekdays, 11 a.m. to 3. I really tuned into a show. It's really struggling. <laughs> and he doesn't need to. He's very good. He could be very funny. He's in a loop, a content loop. Uh, okay. Um, that was that Spotify article. We have more, right? You got to see this. I couldn't believe it. This one rules. You know, you got Caitlyn Jenner. You got every media outlet in the country writing about all these little things. And this is where, really, is this the full clip here? Uh, Xander found this. This is from The View, another show that I like. Some people go.